The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the show of increased volatility, folks. We've got a lot of things going on in the world. Uh, as you know, I'm a technician. I don't understand the fundamentals. I gave that up 50 years ago and been doing okay ever since. But I will try to show you some of the things that I did learn over these periods over the next hour or so. I posted the chart of the DAX. You can see that it has been under a little pressure, much like we are. And that's not too much. But look what happened in the in the FTSE over here. It's back. It's had virtually very little uh, reaction. Now, pretty much uh, the uh, it's not until I believe Wednesday, which is happens to be the King Elvis Presley's birthday, uh, it it is when everything's working again in London, from what I've heard, but I'm not sure uh, exactly. So I just wanted to go through and and show you those two to get you started. But I want to give some accolades in here to some of our guests that we've had on the program before. This is the uh, ending. Uh, uh, rankings of uh, Timer Digest. Uh, these are the long-term uh, Timer Digest of the year, folks. Number one, Kerry Szymanski here of Tucson, Arizona, my good friend with Harmonic Edge. Next down, right, you'll see Mr. Bill Meridian right in there at the top five, followed by Steve Rhodes. Again, Tim Bost. Uh, you can, and, and if you also you notice number three there is Manfred Zimmel. He happens to be an astrologer. So you've got uh, you got several astrologers in here. You've got Manfred Zimmel, Bill Meridian, and Tim Bost as astrologers. So I think that's pretty amazing that they were able to do that. So my hats off to all those guys, and I think it's uh, it's really great that uh, you know you're able to, uh, to 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 make those rankings like that. It's really uh, really really great. Okay, let's move on and talk a little bit about. Uh, something else that I wanted to mention, um, folks. Let, let's let's walk through uh, what, what's going on here uh, with these markets. Let me. I want to I want to show you uh, from history because you know I've been doing this a long time and I think this would help. I'm going to just put this chart up here for platinum because there's a possibility platinum made a double top up here. We made a higher high by 60 cents over the high that we made back in August, and it backed off about. $15 from that. But that's not the main thing that I wanted to talk about. When you see things like this that happen in the world that are very surprising, the markets still act the way they're supposed to act. Let me explain to you two of the most important things uh, that I learned in all my years of trading. The first one, of course, was in 1980. In fact, it was this time in 1980 when I was at Drexel, I was liquidating all of the gold and silver that I've been buying for several years. These We had massive profits, folks. I mean, it was really, really something. Gold was trading in January of that year at around, uh, right around uh, 660, 670, hadn't even hit 700 yet. It topped on January the 20th of that year, of 1980, at $865 an ounce. I was out $200 before the top came in, and I was happy to be out because we didn't have to pay taxes on that stuff till you know 1982 which was uh, you know really good but i had gotten out of every all of that stuff during that time and I have told this story before, and I want to tell it again because it's a little drawn out. But um, I had two people, for two very close friends. I thought they were. But I got them out $200 before the top. And one of them, we've still be friends through the years, of course. But one of them never spoke to me again. Trevor and I and his family, we had traveled, um, gosh, all over the United States at least three times as a family, uh, you know, at resorts and stuff. And we were uh, just uh, gave each other expensive gifts and family stuff. But he, he was so upset about that last uh, $300,000 that uh, he never he never got back to me. He transferred his, his account over to um, Dean Witter, and uh, I found out later that he gave almost all of it back, but I never heard from him again. 
Anyway, let's uh, go back to uh, that time period when the gold was topping. In October of that year, gold had bro uh, bro broken down from January of the uh, 20. The 20th, gold went from limit up to limit down that day. It was a $100 move, and that was the high of the market. It didn't bottom until 2002. It was in a bear market for 22 years. But as the market broke, it broke down hardly from, hard from uh, $865 an ounce down to about $450, as I recall. And then in October of that year, it was making a 61% retracement at 703, 707, that ballpark. I'm not sure the exact figures, but it was right at 700. It was on a Friday, and I had put on a very large position selling at that 61% retracement. And that was from the high in January. Now we're in October. It was a beautiful ABCD, Gartley, everything you could ask for. So I went short that Friday night, and when I went to um, uh, when I went came home over the weekend, everything was fine. We had about a five dollar lead in it, and then uh, Sunday morning, or sun, early Monday morning at five o'clock, I would get up and I had a little radio in the shower, and I always listened to uh, KNX TV, uh, radio K <laughs> KNX in Los Angeles, 1080, <laughs> and uh, I would. Uh, uh, I, I couldn't, I think 1080 or 1020, but uh, Charles Osgood would come on with the early morning gold fix. This is when they had the gold fix in London. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, Iranian jets have hit Iraqi power stations and there is war broken out in the Middle East and the price of gold is soaring. Folks, I was shaving, and I thought I should take the razor and slit my throat either left to right or right to left. I said, oh, no, not again, because I had gone through this in 1974, and so I started calculating in my mind. I had, I had 400 contracts short. And so I figured if it's up $100 an ounce, I lose $4 million. And if it's up, uh, you know, $200 an ounce, I'm going to lose $8 million. I had $20 million that I was trading for people. That was not my money. Anyway, long commercial comes on, blah, blah, blah. It took about three or four minutes. And finally, he started talking about it, what was happening. And he said, the price of gold this morning was soaring. It was up $2.65 I said, at the morning fix. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. I didn't even finish shaving. I just tossed on my sweats, drove in. I was sitting at my desk uh, working in the morning. Uh, by the time I got there and called, gold had already sold off. It opened limit down. Uh, anyway, the news was already out. But uh, I was sitting there in my sweats. And my boss came in. He said, oh, she, he said, you're quitting? And I said, no. I said, why? He said, why? He said, well, because you're dressed like this. I said, well, I, I, I was just really busy, and I just didn't want to. I'll, I'll go home and change. Oh, I don't care. He said, just, he said, and I told him what happened and he laughed about it but that 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 tells you when it's over baby it's over you know that market was in a bear market and it didn't make any difference what the news was and when we get back from the break i'll show you another one that was the that was the bigger one but the other one was of course in the kuwait war in in january of 91 and that one i was prepared for but uh, anyway that's uh that's what i wanted to uh share with you that uh, even though the news is out there be careful because these markets react because they have underlying cycles in there remember Bill Meridian said that we'd probably be topping sometime in early January in the uh, in the gold. And remember, he's not as bullish as he was. So I just something to pay attention to. Whether this platinum and silver is acting very weak, you know, it's not even making a 50% retracement from the September highs. Okay, folks, we'll give you right back. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, let's get back here and uh, want to chat here a little bit about uh, uh, the other situation about news. This was in January of 91, and we were getting ready to go to a war, war with Iraq to get rid of uh, Saddam Hussein. And uh, uh, Norman Schwarzkopf was the leading general there, and I knew that Schwarzkopf was a very strong believer in the art of war. He kept it on his desk by Sun Tzu. And one of the main things in that book is to attack at the darkness of the moon. And here we had a new moon. And at that time, we had crude oil had gone from $11 a barrel top at around $42 a barrel, and then we had gold was making a retracement, nice little butterfly pattern, and then we also had the stock market was making a beautiful Gartley, and um, so I was long. This was on, a, I believe it was on a Wednesday. I went to get my hair cut, and around 4 o'clock, uh, my daughter, I was in California at the, in Pismo Beach, and my daughter called me, and she said, uh, Dad, do you have those positions on? And I said, yeah. She said, oh, Dad, she says, you're really going to get hurt today. And I said, why? She said, turn on the TV turn on CNN. So I turned on CNN and they were lighting up Baghdad and it was really, uh, you know, a big spectacle and stuff. So I said, oh boy, you know, so I tried to get in touch with the floor and I was calling my old Drexel desk, uh, the Goldberg brothers, because they usually gave me a pretty good idea of what was going on. Couldn't get through to him. It was hours before I got through. It must have been seven, eight o'clock at night. When I finally got through to him, he said, oh, Larry, he said, you just can't believe it. And I said, oh, my God. I said, what is it? I said, well, give me crude oil first. He said, there is no crude oil. I said, what do you mean? He said, there's no bids. And I said, what do you mean there's no bids? He said, there's no bids at $6 lower, $7 lower, $8 lower. I said, are you kidding me? What's gold doing? He said, gold's limit down. And uh, he said, stock markets across Asia, he said, are soaring. And uh, that day, I believe, was one of the largest up days we had in stocks, uh, as I recall. But uh, gold, uh, crude oil opened down $11 a barrel. It went from 42 to 11 
Of course, it went from 11 to 140, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Gold continued down, and the stock markets, you know, had a had a huge uh, rally, of course. And so that was uh, so. Just remember that just because the news is out, you know, things can really get a lot different than what you might think. Now, I have a really interesting chart here that I wanted to share with you that uh, I think you'll enjoy. At least the story behind it is pretty good. This is a long-term picture, folks, of actually. Uh, of the stock market. This is from the Elliott Way folks. Now, folks, they're showing, they're looking at from 1720, okay, down to, uh, you know, 1760 in that area. And folks, that area between 1720 and 1840, that's when Sam, uh, Andrew Jackson and stuff, uh, you know, this is, this is the number two there is the end of the Civil War, that number two marking that you see there. Uh, right off of 21, you'll see that was the high in stocks. It was hard to get data back in there, folks. Come on, we were just starting as a country, and uh, you know it was really hard to get data. We really didn't start getting good data until 10 years after the Civil War. That was 1876. That's when we start getting good data. But the main thing I wanted to show you is you'll see the run-up into the a high of the 1929 on September the 3rd, we topped at 381, and we went from 381, we dropped all the way down to 0.4, which I believe was 42 on August, on July the, uh, Bess will have to help me, I think it's 5th of the 8th of 1932, and from there we went up, and you'll notice that you'll see where the Dow hit 987, it went a little above $1,000, and it stayed there from 72 through 74, that number 0.4 there was the big bottom in the stock market, that big drop that you see was the October crash of that year, and from then they kept going higher and higher and higher and higher. Now, the, the, all I'm trying to show you, folks, is the, the fact that these things, when they start to move, now, I don't know if this is wave five up here or not, end of five. I think that it is, just because of the things that I'm looking at. But for heaven's sakes, you know, it's uh, <laughs> nothing else you can do but to take a look at that, that uh, it does mean something. I think it's it's very, very important. Uh, I do believe that when this top is in, it's going to be something that is going to be very, very nasty. And hold on just one second here. Oh, dear, that, that's just a beauty. Hold on just a second. I want to, uh, I'll get to these things in a minute, but my beeper's going off, and I've got to do a couple of things here. So give me a second here. I've got to do a nice, uh, boy, oh, gosh, I just, <laughs> I just got lucky. Hold on, hold on once a second, folks. I wanted to, uh, I'm getting off the beaten path here. I'll get rid of this Elliott Wave stuff, and we can start talking about the markets a little bit. Um First, I want to cover the Bitcoin because it's having a little bit of a move in here. Uh, started, you know, we down, that big move that we had here in Bitcoin down at that bottom at 6,400. Remember, folks, that was a long-term 61% retracement in the log scale from the, the $100 a share to 19,000. That was a 382 retracement on a logarithmic scale that we get from our good friend Jim Bartolioni over in V50 Partners over in. Uh, El Coronado over in San Diego. So that's another one that looks, uh, you know, real interesting. Of course, it holds up. Let's take a quick look here. I know you folks have an interest in the S&P. I just wanted to show you uh, the action over these last few days to see what we're at. You know, there's, there is absolutely no fear in the market, folks. Uh, there, there's complacency. There might be fear coming, but uh, this is what we're looking at. Well, since January the 2nd, the start of the year, when we made the high at 3263, we dropped down uh, 50 handles. That was right during the time when uh, they started all these shenanigans, I guess. And then you had the nice rally back, 61% retracement. You'll notice it was a perfect A, B, C, D. I mean, right to the tick at 32.46. Then we came down over the weekend. You'll notice last night, You'll see we broke down to 32.16. Then last night we rallied up to 32.28. And from that level, bada bing, bada boom, you know, we're down. Right now we're trading around 32.17, I think. But the important thing here, from a technical standpoint, remember all this is techni technical stuff, uh, is the ABCD pattern that tells you that we should hit 31.90 here either today or tomorrow. Now, at any time, of course, there could be a tweet coming out and the market could have a, a big move. I'm looking at 15-minute charts because that gives me a chance, you know, to able to see whether I'm going to be able to enter a trade without risking very much. You know what I mean? 
By the way, David uh, White posted that uh, chart from or something, the quote from uh, Sun Tzu, in the midst of chaos, there is opportunity. I don't know if you know this, folks, but in Chinese literature and Chinese writing, the words for chaos and the words for opportunity are exactly the same. It depends on how it's used in the sentence. So the Chinese use opportunity and uh, risk in the same uh, in the same sentence. It depends on how it's used, you know, in the sentence. So let's uh, take a look at it. I've had a request from one of our listeners who doesn't like to call in because he's over there in Switzerland to take a look at the uh, the Swiss franc versus the U.S. dollar. Uh, let's <laughs> actually, it's, it's not the Swiss franc, folks. It's the, uh, hold on one second. I want to get this up here so you can like take a look at it. It's the South African Rand is what it is. And I want to get this up here to see it. I've never done this before. So bear with me. This is the, uh, the South African Rand. I wanted to show you, uh, the, uh, one, three, five pattern that we have here. Uh, this is a, a weekly chart. So you'll see here, uh, it is really, excuse me, it's a monthly chart. So you'll see it's a very, very important support there uh, on the uh, South African RAND uh, with the uh, U.S. dollar. I don't trade this. I'm just bringing it because one had an interest in it. All right, we'll take a little break here, 877-927-6648. Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you and your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to um, move on just a little bit from the uh, Elliott Wave thing because I did want to show one other chart that uh, Mr. Prector's group had put up here, and I wanted to get this up here so you folks can take a quick look at it. This is uh, showing that the distance between the low in 1932 to the high we made in 1960 and the relationship for the low that we made in the October crash of 1974. There was a double bottom there in October and December. Uh, if you take that distance, it comes out to, you know, to to fee, and which is a 61% retracement of all that. So anyway, that's uh, what we're watching. I'm not sure if that means much or not, but it is a wave five. I'm going to say a couple things here about wave five here, because, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and not many people have, uh, you know, well, there's still some guys around, but most of them too old to even talk or just not interested in it. But you know, when we have these big moves like this, sometimes when they happen, they are life changes. And I believe what we're looking at right now is something that is going to be life changing for a whole bunch of people, because I think we're going to start seeing instead of some uh, really uh, uh, seeing volatility like we've never seen it before, for one thing. But we might be making a major top up in here. And if we meet, if we see that, this is going to be pretty tough on some people in the economy that you know, rely on the stock market and stuff. But the problem actually, folks, is in the bond market. And we have a tremendous amount of uh, speculation, in, especially in the junk bond market. And that's the one that really makes it uh, kind of different. One other comment I want to make is about the Apple trade that I did, which we jokingly called the trade of the year. We went short at uh, 291 and a half in the newsletter two weeks ago. That was, uh, well, is yeah, about a week ago? And yeah, yeah, it was two weeks ago. That's right. And, uh, the stop was $10, so the stop would have been at uh, 301 and a half. Uh, I put my stop because I was only risking seven dollars at two ninety nine and a half, and I took a seven dollar loss. But for the newsletter folks, that is still a valid trade. I don't know where Apple is, but you keep your stop at three oh one. And the reason for that stop, folks, it is three standard deviations from the norm. And that's that is very very unusual. That's like a, uh, a one point six one eight expansion in spades. So uh, three, above 301 in the Apple, it would really be, a, you know, really, really bullish. And, you know, there's no reason in the world to be short Apple, but that's that the, the, the prices have to be the most bullish at the top and most bearish at the bottom. That's the function of price. It, it makes supply and demand come together. When I was in Indiana doing my graduate work back in the uh, mid 60s and MBA, uh, John Kenneth Galbraith from Harvard would come in because he happened to be a friend of one of the professors there and he would give a lecture every year and he always it was packed all the time and it was always be about the stock market and stuff and and he would always uh, say he said he, I remember the comment that I was in there he said folks he said you'd be much better off not going to graduate school but go short a contract of soybeans he says that'll turn you teach you more about supply and demand than you're going to get in these two years here at the university. And he was right, because that, that tells you, you know, tells you about margins. It tells you about uh, risk control. It tell, you know, it teaches you all about those things. But uh, in fact, that's uh, basically what we're looking at. When we're doing this, those of you that read the newsletter this week uh, from my good friend, John Jameson, you, you know, he talked about, uh, you know, the, uh, the war with, uh, uh, Han uh, with uh, uh, Hannibal, and it was really uh, uh, Napoleon, excuse me, and uh, it was really amazing to hear, you know, the story behind it and how he was beaten at Waterloo and stuff like that. But it's all about risk control, and it's all about how you put your generals working. And your generals in this business, is, folks, is your is your capital. So you have to protect your capital. And that's what you have to do is to keep your things to uh, do that. Yes, the Galbraith just died just a couple of years ago. He's a really, really a nice man, and uh, that was neither here nor there. Thanks, David. You are an absolute wealth of information. I can tell you, I'm just absolutely blown away by how much you uh, you really know. Now, one of the things that we talk about here, and we haven't had Shane on for from uh, Wolf Trader uh, recently because he is just so doggone busy. Uh, this is a uh, from the Federal Reserve. 
Board of Governors, you'll see that, uh, you know, what's really happening here with this $3 trillion that's going on. Something is happening in these in these markets, folks, because they are pumping money into it <clears throat> like, uh, like never before. I don't know how it's going to be pumped out. Uh, maybe through the cistern, I don't know, flushed, I'm not sure. But this is unusual that we've got going on. So keep your eyes on the ball here because we are at a critical uh, point in time. And the fact that we're right here in January, I think, is very important. Remember, we have these big cycles that uh, Bill Meridian talked to us about. That, that ends on the 10th of the uh, month, which is going to be Friday. And I believe we're going to have uh, Norm Winsky on, and he'll be uh, talking about that. And, of course, uh, we have the 8th of January, which is the birth date of Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Elvis Presley and Elvis Aaron Presley and from 1935. Anyway, let's move on here and uh, carry a few other things here that you might have. If you have any questions, folks, it's 877-977-6648. I'll be happy to answer uh, any any questions for you. I think it's uh, interesting to uh, to see that. Let's take a quick look at what the markets are doing right now, and we'll see uh, what's going on. Okay, uh, wow, boy, folks, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you something here right now. In about in about three or four weeks. I'm going to have something that is going to be really, really spectacular here. It might take me a little longer, but I'm working on something with uh, John Jameson that looks, and also Tom Hugard, that is, uh, it's a mechanical system, but my gosh, you know, it really gets the, it puts the edge on. I tell you, I uh, I just can't, uh, I, when I look at it, uh, I'm, I'm just absolutely can't believe it two-thirds of the time. The other third of the time, I'm absolutely sure of it. All right, let's move on here and see if we have any questions. Get this up here. I wanted to... Uh, show you, uh, I'll get this up here to show you uh, palladium here because this is one that we've, uh, we're keeping an eye on for one of our listeners here. We'll get this up here. You'll notice here the palladium came down. We had uh, the moves. Th 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 what's important about this palladium chart, folks, is look at the break that we had between November the 4th and November the 11th. We see this all the time. Well, the break that we had between uh, December 16th and December 23rd, okay, what was that break? It was exactly the same amount drop the same amount. So that's why when you see those, you that's what's happening. Uh, it, it's really, uh, it, there's no mystery of that. You know, it's uh, pretty much what's been going on. So I, I have never traded palladium before, but it looks like it's going to go above. It's already above, uh, or it's got a, a price objective there of, of 2016. And, uh, you know, but we'll see. All I know is what I'm looking at is what I'm watching. So anyway, we'll keep a close eye on it as we as we go through and look at some of these other charts that we wanted to uh, to talk about. I've already posted the uh, the E mini chart showing that we'd have. Let's see what the prices are. See if we're holding up at those levels or not. And uh, let's see where we are. Yeah, we're holding all right. We so far the low of the overnight is uh, 32. Uh, uh, oh, see, was it 32? Yeah, 3209. We're trading at 3220. So it's pretty interesting to see if uh, that's going to be uh, a big case. 877 927 6648. the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and we are looking at the uh, stock markets holding up relatively well here, given the fact it looks like the end of the world is in sight. But we're trading at uh, 32.23. We've had a range last night of a high of uh, 32.30, and then we had a, a low of around 32.12, 32.10. So it's just hanging in there, you know, really not uh, doing too much. So we'll pay close attention to it. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, crude oil, we've had a interesting thing in crude oil, if I, if I mentioned several times, uh, we mentioned it in the newsletter, of course, and then also in the video that we sent out uh, Sunday, is the fact that there was a lot of resistance up there at that $64. We had a little three drive to a top pattern up there at 64.30 or something like that last night. We've dropped a buck a barrel. No big deal, but the fact that the market is not going crazy, given the fact that the sabers are rattling everywhere, that uh, certainly must mean something. Uh, that's the main thing of what we're paying attention to. So we'll just keep a close eye on that as we uh, move on. Okay. Wanted to do a couple other things here. I wanted to uh, bring uh, to your attention one other uh, chart here that I thought was relatively important that we had posted earlier, but I didn't get a chance to talk about it very much, and that is this platinum chart. If you'll get this up here, uh, yes, we do have a full moon Friday, Marshall. Thank you very much. Here is the uh, chart of platinum. Now, Friday, what we did, folks, is we took out the high of August. Okay, now the high of August, uh, that that was at uh, uh, 1,080 cents, okay? And what we did on Friday, we had 1,001 and 40 cents. So we went above it by 60 cents. And we broke $13. Well, that's why platinum is so weak today, folks, and giving the other ones the fact that it's just uh, that could be a major double top in here. And I'm going to give you some homework right now. If you think this is a bullish chart on platinum, folks, take a look at the weekly chart on platinum. That weekly chart on platinum is not bullish. Let me tell you, that is not bullish. That is not bullish, okay? That's uh, very, very uh, important. Okay, get off the beaten path a little bit. I have to tell a little bit of a, of a family story because it was so important yesterday. Uh, I have, I don't like to, I don't, I, as most of you know, I don't bet on games. I don't bet on football, basketball, baseball, any of that stuff. I stopped that many, many years ago. And the reason for it was in 1977, I was a Drexel. And Bob Gilmillion and I and Leroy Linhart were all we were booking the bets for all the coin from all the coin dealers. We were acting as a bookie, and uh, you know it was really exciting. We, we anyway, long long story short, but I was watching the game on Saturday morning. We get our charts in from from a commodity perspective, and I was sitting there 
and Oklahoma was playing Nebraska. And uh, I had the game won. I had Nebraska and six points. And, you know, I, I, anyway, what happened was uh, the, a player for uh, Oklahoma named Elvis Peacock, they called the play called the Missouri Flea Flicker. And with six seconds to go, uh, he caught the ball, flipped it over to the halfback, which was Elvis Pe Peacock. And he ran down. I forget how much. It seemed like he ran forever. But he won as the game ended, and he won the game. And uh, that was nicknamed the Missouri Flea Flicker. And uh, th and I was screaming and yelling so hard, and I was so angry that I lost that game. I went into the into the family room. I was in the family. I went into the kitchen, and my daughter, eight years old, is on the telephone dialing nine one one. And I said, "What are you doing?" She says, "Dad, you're having a heart attack." And I said, "No, no." I said, "I'm not having a heart attack." I said, "Hang up the phone." And I said, "What's going on?" She said, "Dad, she was crying. She was really emotional." She said, "Dad says I'm really worried that you're going to die." She said, "I've never heard you scream so much and say such bad words." And I said, "Well, you know, I got." She said, "How much do you have on the game?" I said, two hundred dollars." She says, "Is two hundred dollars a lot of money for you, Dad?" And I said, "Did your mother put you up to this?" And uh, she said, "No, Dad." She said, "I'm really concerned that you're going to die." From that day on, I never bet. I never made a sports bet. And the biggest bet I ever make is a hundred bucks. That's that's on the on the on the horses for the Derby and stuff like that. And I'm actually pretty good at the horse racing thing. But uh, and I don't do that very often. But anyway, at that time, I never I never did it. So I'm watching the game yesterday, and I'm really rooting for Minnesota because Rich Anderson is involved, and uh, they don't have a chance against the New Orleans Saints. And uh, son of a gun. Uh, they ended up winning, and it was in a really you know, <laughs> it was very very exciting anyway. But Anyway, I was I was thinking about all that stuff, and I wanted to uh, be able to understand that uh, you know that this really the, when you bet on these games it really means nothing. But since that time, I, I never really uh, I never really did anything like that. Uh, that's uh, that's the main thing. But anyway, we were chatting about it. And she was laughing that she said I don't even remember that, and I said I'm glad you don't. But uh, that's why I don't do that anyway, and I don't even miss it. Yesterday, you know, I was watching, and I said, gosh, if I was watching this, I would probably you know. My, my blood pressure would go up and down like a like a yo-yo, so I don't really do it anymore. We stopped uh, back. At, yeah, well, let's get on. Any any questions? Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We'll see what's going on here. Uh, one of the questions someone's asking me: Could the stocks make new high? Absolutely, stocks could make new high from here. Just because uh, you know the Elliott wave comes up with that number five count, you know, hey, I don't know. You know, when you look at those counts, folks, I mean, give me a break. Some of that data. You know, they're talking about from 1720 to 1865. Give me a break. I, I dare you to go back and try to find a price for something in the newspapers. We've got a fabulous library here at the University of Arizona, and I used to go down and dig that stuff out. And believe me, it's not easy to do. Of course, you know, Google does it a little bit better now, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I, You know, basically, folks, uh, I am basically a short-term trader related to risk. I tried to, you know, Describe what that's like in the newsletter, and uh, that's really what you're looking for. Is you're looking for an edge, whether that edge works or not, is uh, is really uh, neither here nor there. So that's what we're that's where we're keeping an eye on. I hope that helps. Anyway, we'll watch this. Uh, the VIX. Uh, uh, see, yeah, VIX had a high of 1639, a low of 1492. Uh, Tucker, thanks for putting that in. That's basically telling you, folks, that there's there's not any fear out here. I mean, it really isn't. You know, it's not it's not like it it's not like it was. Uh, you know, when we had 911 or something like that. You, you know, of course, 911. We lost several thousand people that day, but. Uh, and that was, you know, a game changer. But I don't know if this is going to be a game changer or not. Nobody else does either. Remember, folks, Iran has 84 million people, and it's twice the size of Texas, okay? And if you remember uh, Winston Churchill, he called, he called uh, John F. Kennedy up during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and he told Kennedy, he says, look, he said, make it really simple. He said, take your planes, fly them over uh, Cuba 
all during the day for the next uh, you know month or so. He said it'll, it'll destroy the, cu the the sugar crop and they'll be out of business. That's what Winston Churchill told him. Of course, they tried the Bay of Pigs and that didn't work too well either. So we'll see. Anyway, guys, we're coming to the end of the rope here this morning, folks. We're going to have a couple of guests this week. Tomorrow, and uh, we're going to have the Astrologer Boys on. We're going to have Arch Crawford this week. We're going to have Tim Bost on, number six in the group here. So that's going to be good. Oh, we got a caller here from uh, New York. Uh, Dennis, are you there? Yes, Larry, how are you? Very good. Dennis, I'll tell you what, we're going to have to pay a few bills here uh, for Mr. O'Brien. But if you'll stay with us, we'll we'll talk about Palladium here uh, when you uh, when you get back, okay? Okay. Because thanks, we, we do, yeah, thanks for holding on. And what I'll do, it'll give me time to post the chart for Palladium on a 30 minutes so we can discuss it a little bit more cogently. That's, That's a pretty thanks. big word. Okay, buddy. We'll be right back, folks. 877 927 6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with uh, Dennis in New York. Dennis, you have a question on the 30-minute palladium chart. Yes, I was wondering if you see a three peaks in a domed house um, pattern. Is that is on, that the, on the thirty on the thirty, on the 30 minute? minute? Yeah. 
No, I don't, Dennis. And the reason why is I don't see any symmetry there at all over the past three or four days. It's been in a range you know, between 1975 and we hit a little above 2000 uh, today. But I, I actually I don't see anything there at all. There's no clarity that I'm watching. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm watching it for someone that uh, mm -hmm. I deal with quite a bit. He, he wants to get short palladium. And I'm looking for a price of around 2016, you know, risking about 20 bucks. But, you know, that's $30 mm -hmm. from where we are right now. But I don't see anything yeah. at three peaks in the dome house. It's got to be real easy to see, just like a three drive to a top pattern. If you mm -hmm. have to ask, if you have to ask the question, Dennis, the answer is probably no. It's mm -hmm. got to be I'm really looking at clear. It from Sunday, this Sunday, this, uh -huh. this Sunday uh, evening. Oh, I uh, see. Oh, I see all that. Way, that all the way yes, up to today. I, yeah, 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 yeah. That is. There's three drives. I see that really clearly now. It's a very small chart, but oh, I should have yes. blown it up. Yeah, I do see it. That is three it's peaks a, in a domed house. You're absolutely correct. On okay. a 30 minute chart on that I, period I of time. I need to call tops because that's not fun no, to do. No, no, yeah, that's all it's all about. It's not necessarily a top. You're looking for a trading turn and how much you have to risk. Tops and bottoms, they don't mean the same thing. It's how much you have to risk. Yes, exactly. You know, no, that's and, very uh, good. I, Palladium's a tough one. Yeah, it just keeps on uh, going and going, and uh, you know, showing <laughs> well, we this had, one is not easy. <laughs> we had a, we had a two hundred dollar drop into December twenty second, and then it comes back and rallies three hundred dollars. So it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> not at all. I did you know, catch that downdraft and, and took profit. Good. good. Um, well, I was, I'm, I'm going to show uh, this three peaks in the dome not house on the so show hard tomorrow to, to buy it back. <laughs> I have nothing wrong with that. That's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> if you look at the, if you look at this on the bottom between the 22nd and the 24th, that was a perfect 135 pattern, you know, with higher bottoms. It was really nice there. It's 1830. Hey, thanks for joining in and happy New Year to you, my friend. Thank you, Barry. Okay, we'll you see have a good one. Yeah, we'll see you all tomorrow, folks. May God bless.